Hello. Depending on where you are joining us from, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, and welcome to the second digital talk as part of RIBA Hello China digital series. I'm Aslina Bulma, Director of RIBA International. Thank you for joining us uh, for this talk with Li Zhengang of Atelier Zhengang and the Chief Architect of China Design and Research uh, Group direct from Beijing for this talk, whilst all of us are based across the world, some at home and others in the office perhaps. We are incredibly excited to have Xingang with us as he takes us through his talk on integrated geometry and poetic scenery, which showcase some of the amazing work he has been part of. I'm particularly pleased to be introducing uh, Li Xingang and um, his work tonight as RIB extend further our work in China. We opened one of our first offices internationally in Shanghai in December 2019, and since then have launched an exciting program which we've named Hello China, that will see us delivering a suite of activities in the next 12 months. Led by my colleague Umi Liu in my team, who is based in Shanghai, RIB in China has already successfully delivered a range of uh, events and activities in recent months in uh, our 4x4 talks in Shanghai, Shenzhen and Guangzhou, for example. We will be in Guangzhou next Tuesday and we, will, we also launch our digital talk uh, early in August and Zhengyang is our second speaker of this series. Uh, we have some wonderful programming coming up soon. Um, we'll be in Beijing in late September for the Design China Beijing, where we, and we will also be launching an exclusive photography co competition. So look out for more details on WeChat, particularly our audience in China. Please do subscribe to our IB WeChat account where regular updates are provided for you to be part of our exciting journey in China. Design excellence is really is important to our IBA and our members, no matter where they are in the world. I am delighted that Zhengang has chosen to join our IBA, and we are truly honoured to have Zhengang as part of our global community. Li Zhengang needs little introduction, of course. He is the founder of Atelier Li Zhengang in 2003, visiting professor at Tianjin University, where he also graduated with a doctoral degree, and a design tutor at the School of Architecture, Tsinghua University. His practice and research very much focus on the topic he is going to talk about to us today, emphasizing the cultural depths and aesthetic affection in the close synergy between nature and people. Jingang's main architectural design works include Museum of Sight at Xanadu, Jigzi Museum, Gymnasium of the new campus of Tianjin University, and the renovation of number 28, Daiyuan Hutong. Li Jingang and his practice have received many awards, no surprise to many there, for their work, including the Goal Awards for of Art Asia Award of Architecture 2019, the WA Chinese Architecture Awards 2014, 16, and 18 and the Arc Daily Building of the Year Award in 2018. These are simply a very, very small sample of the awards they have received. I'm going to hand over to Zheng Gang imminently to start the talk, but before I do that, I just have a couple of housekeeping points. Since we are using Zoom uh, for this event, we cannot see or hear the audience. Uh, we are unable to take questions from audience for Zheng Gang for this talk, however, should you have any general queries, do use the chat function or send something in the Q&A function so we can get back to you and support you. If you are a social media user, feel free to use the hashtag, hashtag RiverGlobal for Twitter and also RIBA WeChat for those in China and Southeast Asia. Finally, please do actively use the chat function. We would love to hear what, where you're listening uh, this talk from and also your thoughts on today. And that's all from me for now. I'll be back at the end for some questions for Zhengang. I'm very happy now to hand over to Li Zhengang for his talk. Zhengang, over to you. Thank you, Aslina, for your introduction. Uh, good afternoon, uh, good evening, and uh, uh, good uh, morning. Uh, 
uh, everyone uh, joining this online event. It is my honor and pleasure to take part in this RIBA talk. Uh, the COVID-19 change allowed about our lives in very short time in the world. How we work, how we meet, and even how we talk. But as an architect, I believe how we view, how we think, and how we make the architecture could not be so easily to be changed. Uh, recently, uh, we will publish a book called Li Xingang 1991-2020, presenting my works of making architecture during the 30 years since I graduated from my university. This is a drawing of a fictive map drawn by me in the beginning of this book called Poetic Scenery City or Shengjing City. Shengjing uh, could be means poetic scenery. It is um, very difficult to be translated into English. Uh, it includes most of my architectural projects. They are located in the positions in the city as the similar, similar environment or natural conditions they are in, the, in their uh, uh, reality in the inner city. Now, uh, in, the re in the inner city, in the outer city, in the suburb area, in the town, in the new developing city, in the mountains, uh, besides the river, or even uh, on the island in the sea, uh, we have not been working in one focused place or area. The Shengjing city is fictive, but it is composed by all of the real sites of our work inside and outside China. Very different, very complicated, challengeable, and real. Now, now I will choose some of them to share with you. The first project is Jianchuan Mirror Museum and Wenchuan Earthquake Memorial, completed in 2010. The west facade of the building shows a peaceful and tranquil uh, exterior. Unlike its peaceful exterior, exterior look, the interior displays this orientating are orienting images allowing people to experience and memorialize the disasters. The commercial areas, grounding floor, shopping area, and upper level residential spaces framed by the surrounding streets enclose the museum's large and small internal courtyards. With the with the courtyard as the hub, the long double gallery exhibition space extended out from the courtyard in a windmill shape. These two pictures shows the courtyard and the street lane in the building with con concrete and red and gray shell bricks as the main material. The model shows part of the double gallery exhibition space. The interior of the mirror museum is made of white painted checkered steel plates. We added rotating mirror doors at double gallery corner 
intersections to create an eye world changing disorienting environments to, to stimulate the frenzy and 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 the uh, and, uh, uh, and the, uh, the frenzy and chores of the cultural revolution. The second project is Visitor Center for Sight of Denadu, completed in 2011. With a tiny light and a temporary sense of presence, this small settlement expresses its respect for the grand, deep, and enduring grassland and site environment. The building has a decentralized layout on one side of the site's axis, which not only reduce, reduces its volumetric tension with the environment, but also creates an uninterrupted sight line to the site of the Nadu. The ancient site is, show, is showed, shown on the top of this aerial photo. Seen from afar, a group of small circular and oval buildings with sloped white facade is surrounded by two open courtyards for staff and visitors. As visitors approach the complex, some of the circular and oval buildings that they expect to be traditional individual yurts are actually linked structures that unfold around the courtyard. This photo shows the view from the courtyard to the site of the Nadu. The inner facade is made of rough concrete, which remains its wood green image. It's painted in a thin layer of white paint. We also did some model research to choose a different exterior material. The, exterior, the, the exterior's continuous curved surface is covered by white semi-translucent PTFE membrane. It provides certain thermal insulation pro properties and brings a sense of lightness like yurts erected on the grassland. The next project is Jixi Museum, completed in, two, in 2013. Jixi's unique geography, which includes mountains, rivers, people, and a culture, along with its historic village plan, inspired the museum's design. The building is covered by a continuous roof rolling contours that bends and follows, splits and merges. The combination of structural sections forms the undulating roof outline, like the mountain ridge around Jixi, which is the full embodiment of Jixi's topography. The building is not only naturally integrated with the surrounding residential buildings and the whole ancient town, but it also inter interacts with the surrounding mountains. This photo shows the mountain and the mountain-like roofs. Courtyards, patios, and passes are carefully arranged in the museum's layout to retain and incorporate more than 40 existing trees on the site. This photo shows the main courtyard, the second courtyard with a lot of existing trees. 
especially a seven-year-old locust tree in the third yard in the northwest. In the end, sightline slowly guides people to a roof platform and uh, at the southeast corner of the building. There, people may overlook the roof, courtyards, and beautiful distant mountains. The next project is Gymnasium of the New Campus of Tianjin University, completed in 2015. The design adopts in a compact and efficient, efficient way a space and the layout a private, private for multi-use university athletic center within a tight, tight land area. A linear public space was designed to connect different sports venues in a in accordance with each activity's rules regarding court size, spatial boundaries, and equipment. A series of structural units, including cylindrical arches, ruled surfaces, and coned concrete arches were integrated to support the ceiling and the surface as the building's ex exterior walls. The result is a perfectly unified structure of space and function. It has varied architecture outlines, externally and ex exposed texture of timberboard formed concrete internally. The building looks like a dense settlement composed of multiple sports space. Along with its relationship to its environment, the different scales and the shapes of the structure echo the extension and the movement of the human body immersing part participants in their activity. These two pictures shows the different views from the opposite, opposite directions in the same space. The indoor sports spaces mainly expose concrete with natural color texture and whitewash. By means of the section model, we study the green buildings strat strategies such as natural ventilation, natural sunlight, uh, allowing sunlight and natural drainage, drainage system. In contrast to the current trends of ostentation, ostent uh, ostentators and uh, arbitrary architectural adornments at one extreme and the fashionable light architecture at the other ex extreme, the gymnasium highlights the beauty of tectoni tectonics and the strength of exposed concrete. This picture shows the interior view of the swimming pool that presents a calm, subtle, uh, and poetic space. The fifth project is Museum for Site of Zanadu, completed in 2015. The museum facing the ruins is located halfway up the hill on the east side, on the east side of Ulantai, which was site to be one of the uh, become towers set up by uh, Kublai Khan in order to protect the Nadu city. Visitors come from the south and walk around the hill. They enter the museum area through the road 
at the foot of the northeast side of the hill. The museum previously hidden. Sorry. The museum previously hidden in the hill suddenly appears, surprising the visitors. The main body of the museum was embedded into an existing abandoned mining site. Repairing, repairing the hill damaged by the mining. Along the museum's interior and exter exterior visiting paths linking to the peak, a series of platforms upon which people may overlook the ruins and hilly, hilly grassland are set up. The ex existing circular pit is observed and transformed into a sunken courtyard surrounded by visitors' service area. That is shown in this section. This picture shows the view of the sunken courtyard. Following the principle of minimal intervention to preserve the in integrity of the environment's cultural heritage, a majority of the building is hidden into the hill with only a small long trip exposed. It functions as a metaphor for wall ruins. We rotated the strip from north to east by 18 degrees to intersect with the hill contour. Pointing to the starting point of the Senadu site, which is Ming Demen Gate on the central axis of the capital city site, the building has an ideal perspective towards an actual, actual relation with the site. The next project is a camping service center in Lona, completed in 2017. We opted for contemporary design that would result in a familiar sense of stringeness. We innovated at three levels, spatial memory, geog uh, geographical environment, and the local construction, and explored a kind of modernity, including metaphor and the natural growth within the land. The new building is regarded as the continuous continuation of the pre-existing houses, as the building space, contour, size, and the stone wall remain well, remain well preserved. The undulating stone uh, steps rise and fall to represent the cast landforms and the distinctive geology in Lona. The building is like a boulder emerging from the foot of the nearby cast mountain. nicknamed Mantle Mountain after its re resemblance to steamed vents. When visitors approach from edge of the field to see the changing elevation of mountain floor to the mountain forest, they also see a platform for views and free climbing. The inclusion, inclusion of modern facilities open to the public nonetheless, nonetheless conforms to the settings of the original dwellings. 
The picture shows the interior view of the dining and the cafe. The open space between the two homesteads is designed as the third inner courtyard with one side open to the shaded natural mountain forest. For construction, the local mix concrete with available materials, especially stone, such as the wall shown in the picture. The next project is the miniature Beijing renovation of number 28, Da Yuan Hu Tong, completed in 2018. While maintaining the basic building appearance and height of the roof line, a common courtyard house of 262 square meters was transformed into five apartments with self-contained courtyard, as well as a public space that hosted a cafe and a tea house. This small experimental project was design practice that combined historical urban renewal, courtyard renovation, and the unique opportunity, opportunity to research Beijing's development as a compound city. Based on the study of Beijing's traditional yet complex urban structure, along with an understanding and the utilizing of its extended and densified structure, the crowded courtyard house was transformed into a collection of small courtyard dwellings. The layout of the house garden unit and a public unit fit in the structure of contemporary society, turning the courtyard house into a miniature community. Turning from the noisy urban commercial streets into the peaceful and literally Hutong district. Then through the offside main Hutong to a semi external alleyway and a further smaller lane, one may see five courtyard apartments with different sizes and the configurations. Three small house gardens in the north, one middle and one large house gardens in the south. Each contains a courtyard that is varied in size and shape. The main living room of each apartment is spacious and bright with the additional benefit of a garden view. This picture shows the view from the living room to the courtyard of the middle unit. Walking further south along the main lane alleyway, passing the cafe and the tea house, visitors arrive at a small public garden at the rear and the visitors can then climb the elevated platform of the pavilion above the courtyard via a set of concrete steps. With the setting sun as the backdrop, the profound scenery composed of cascading roofs of the courtyard houses in the old city, the ancient trees, flying pigeons and the high-rise buildings in the distance bring visitors into a contemplative state. The next project is the Silo Pavilion, Holiday Inn Express Beijing, Shougang Park. The design respects the authenticity of the industrial 
remains continues the historical memory of the old industrial zone of Shogang uh, Park and the presence, the harmony and the tension of the building. Old and new physically seemingly call it while integrating in function and form. Previously abandoned, it, uh, abandoned and uh, designated for demolition, these industrial buildings were now to be preserved to the ut utmost extent, retaining their spatial, structural, and exterior features. New structures would be constructed within them and stacked into several layers to accommodate future use. The lower space, a solo, a silo, would be used for public space. The guest rooms would be installed in the pavilion, which floats above the original, uh, uh, above the original factory building. The just position of silo and the pavilion forms a strong uh, contrast between old and the new. The old and new buildings interspersed here create an exciting inner world. The, compo uh, the components of distinctive industrial ca characteristics are dramatically, dramatically on view in the public space of the lobby. The new structure shrinks in volume from the lower to upper floors. The skylight diffuses light evenly through the translucent membrane to the circular atrium, filling the entire guest room area with a feeling of tranquility. The three sides of huge metal hoppers of returning all bunker and the Overhauled, hold it, hold stairs are completely re, re, retained inside the all day dining room. The interior of the, all, uh, of the upper hopper is transformed into a bar gallery in an ingenious way that, uh, that allows guests uh, to enjoy a unique space. The next project is Yuhuan Museum and Library, planned to be completed in 2020 or even later. In this model photo, we can see the museum on the left and the library on the right. The large landscape between the museum and the library is a large body of the water. Simultaneously, the overall spatial, spatial uh, composition, including the multi-level structures and the landscape, is like a mountain sea scenery. The units of the building are interlocked and connected in linearly and all stacked vertically. The inner uh, courtyards of the two buildings are relatively far away and in opposite directions connected by the horizontal lawn of water. Both the museum and the library were modeled as modern fishing village settlements with horizontal, horizontal and vertical combination by curved roof building units. And the both Groups of buildings uh, sit on large stone foundations accessible by long ramps and stairs. The project further develops, develops a study how to combine and integrate a single modular unit to create buildings and group spaces. The museum and the library 
were built using a concrete cable sus suspension method to create a concave surface and a similar large span fish uh, belly beam structure were also used. The modular structures and the units are repeatedly combined, varied, connected, and enclosed in horizontal and vertical directions to form unique indoor column-free spaces and outdoor public spaces. The last project is Beijing 2022 Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games Yanqing Zone venues and the facilities planned to be completed in 2020. With minimal dis disturbance to the environment, we used innovative architecture and organic design to integrate the natural landscape with the competition venues. The Yanqing Winter Olympic Village and the National Sliding Center to the south of the competition zone face each other from east to west across the valley over a dammed river and pond in between. That is shown at the bottom of the, the aerial photo. The north area of the competition zone is the National Alpine Ski Center that is shown on the top of the uh, photo. This picture shows us the starting area of the National Alpine Ski Center at the top of the Xiaohai Tu Mountain, which is similar to a huge kit, kite kit uh, flying over, to the, uh, over the top of the mountain. In addition to the main venues, the infrastructure that supports the competition zone, such as cable stations, transformer substations, water delivery pump stations, are also carefully constructed. We try to make them suitable for different mountain environments based on careful site selections and enhance their pub, uh, pub, uh, publicity uh, and viewing functions. In this project, we make full use of the existing natural terrain and scenery in the zone, combining various carries Characteristic, characteristic venues to create a three-dimensional mountain landscape layout. Different scenes are connected by a landscape tour path throughout the park, forming a life-size contemporary landscape painting in high tall mountains and its deep valleys. So, behind the making architecture is the architecture's viewing and the thinking architecture. The second book we will publish at the same time with the first one is about my viewing architecture called Wandering, Walking, Viewing, Living. It is included, sorry, it is included 399 pieces of my sketches and relevant faces, phrases about what I saw and drew and drew and wrote during the past years. The living part is about the daily life and the research, the site and the design of some projects. This page shows imitating Guan Liang's The Drunken Beauty on 8 March 2019 with some words at the architect's dialogue on, te on technology, culture, and the future at the University of Pennsylvania's 
uh, Wharton China Center. I also sometimes record my observations on the project site by sketch and the words like the work camping service center in Lona that mentioned in the, in the first book. Of course, there are some concept sketches at, at the very beginning of a design like this one of the Silo Pavilion project. Also, this sketch and the phrases of the whole zone, Yanqing zone of the Beijing Winter Olympic. The wandering part is about gardens and the imitations of noted paintings. This page shows the sketching imitating the famous three hills and the five gardens of Beijing in the Qing Dynasty. Garden is an important type of architecture that I am very interest, interested in, whether to draw it or to design it. This is a sketch of the humble administrator's garden in Suzhou city. Not only gardens, but also Chinese bonsai is an imitation and mini, mini to, uh, to tradition, mean tradition of natural landscape. It is also includes the sketch of the mountain-like rocks. The walking part is about landscape and the traveling. This page shows some notes on the Huangshan tour, Huangshan Yuping Peak. I said people wandering and recreating in nature, high distance. This is the notes on the Yangtze River travel, living on the river bank with the world's riverside architecture. One of the sketches of the Longmen grottoes in Luoyang city. While overlooking a Mexican city, from the plane, I quickly drew it and wrote, the city follows a rolling topography. The viewing part is about buildings, settlements, and the cities. This sketch shows the overlooking of the Forbidden City and the Beijing City from Wanchun Pavilion in Jingshan Hill. It has been nearly 30 years since I saw this, saw this scene from, for the first time in summer 1990. The inner feeling and the awe are still as fresh as, as if it happened yesterday. Starting from this, I seem to have traveled from thousands of miles and returns as if still a teenager. All of these things of life, all of my souls are in front of me. Beijing and the Forbidden City are my starting point and a point of constant return. This is Shui Jian's village, Zhong Fortress in Yu County in Hebei province. This is a site diagram of Guanyin State Stator on the upper floor, Guanyin Pavilion Dula Temple in Ji County uh, in Tianjin. This sketch of looking west to the courtyard and mountains at the sunset on the front platform of the East Hall, Fu Guang Temple. Wutai Mountains in Shanxi Province. By all the above four means of viewing architecture, I noticed and found a cons consistent design philosophy in these buildings, gardens, settlements, and cities, and began to think about a 
paradigm for reality, realist, uh, realistic ideal space, integrated geometry and the poetic scenery, which is included in the third book, going to be published at the same time with the first and second ones. So this book is about my thinking of architecture during the past period called Essays about integrated geometry and the poetic scenery. I summarized five elements of integrated geometry and the poetic scenery in this book. The first is feng shui situation, second, narrative space, third, structural field, fourth, man-made and natural, nature work, fifth, situation and poetic scenery. Also in this book, our works of making architecture, including the previous 10 projects I presented, are divided into about 10 categories of subjects with the following, following uh, keywords. The first is min miniature city, second, narrative courtyard garden, third, in-framed in scenery from nature, Fourth, settlement of structure space units. Fifth, urban settlement. Uh, sixth, structural field. Seven, uh, built halls and imitated mountain. Uh, eight, completed house and garden. Nine, ruined nature. Ten, wooded, uh, wooded mountain venue. We are and have been purchasing a kind of architecture interacting with nature. The nature could be a kind of natural or wild nature, and also could be a kind of artificial or civilized nature. Especially the later one is the typical and the most of kind of conditions and the re realities which we are facing in our daily works. Come back to this drawing. They are very different, complicated, ch challengeable, but real. And they are almost included in the drawing of Shenzhen City. We try to involve in and contribute for making a poetic Scenery city, a re, uh, realistic ideal space for the people who live in the world by our viewing, thinking, and the making of architecture. Thank you. Thank you, Zheng Zhang, for a truly fascinating talk. I can actually truly see how your buildings are poetic in so many different ways. Your approach in the last 30 years, very nurturing the wider environment and its users, and clearly uh, the results speak for themselves. Uh, just taking one example, the Jigzi Museum, the consideration you gave to the environment really comes through the design. The mountain-like roofs and incorporation of over 40 existing trees are just a couple of examples which really do showcase the careful balance that you place on good design and environment. So I suppose my first question really, uh, because we've got a bit of time, is uh, what first inspire you to blend nature and environment into your design and why these are central to the considerations uh, you give to your design and schemes? Um, Yes, as, thank you for your question, uh, as Alina. Um, as I said and uh, presented in the in the um, uh, presentation before, uh, thirty years ago, when I when I was a university student, I first climbed to the Jingshan Hill and the, the Wanchun uh, Pavilion to see to see the Forbidden City, the whole 
view of the Forbidden City. I was deeply moved by the view. It's an it's, um, artificial city, but it uh, combined with the trees, with the courtyards, numbers of courtyards, big or small, and um, with the sky, with the people who um, were living our, 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 uh, 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 our working in this, in this city. So it's, um, I, I, I realized that this is not, although the, it is a traditional uh, works, but um, there should be some uh, very uh, valuable uh, smart design or uh, philosophy in this uh, construction of the architecture and the city. So I began from that point, I began to, to study the, the traditional city and architecture to try to find the secret of, the, of this smart strategy of design and the philosophy. So I found, finally I found um, the, 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 the reason of the city moving me um, and the reason of the, 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 the gardens, the settlements, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, traditional architecture, I later do, do research work. All, all of them uh, show, um, state, uh, show a state that the artificial works works or re reacted with the nature factors very well. They are, they are cooperate and they are, uh, they are, uh, they cannot be, uh, be, uh, be exist without each other, without the other one. So this is, uh, this is my, um, uh, uh, result of, of, of the research work. And then I try to, uh, uh, if I try to, uh, put this, um, this, uh, this, uh, philosophy or this strategy in my, uh, architectural practice. So that, this is, um, the, the, the story. No, that, that, that is just fantastic. And I have to say Forbidden City is one of my favorite things to do when I'm in Beijing. I go to Forbidden City every time I'm there. It's uh, just truly magnificent. I can see how that inspired you many years ago. And thinking about, I'm thinking about our, our audience. I know I come from uh, Auckland and I know someone from Jakarta, Singapore, uh, London, China, of course. Um, and uh, all of them are architects. And I have worked for RIB for five years. But the one thing that I hear a lot about is the interaction between you and between the architects yourself and clients. Now, I know you didn't really talk about one of your project, which is Tang Shan, um, which I know is very bold, it's very special. Uh, and my Chinese colleagues informs me that the design is very much unique in China residential design practice. Were there any difficulties uh, in the design process and how did you persuade your client to accept your ideas? Okay. Uh, actually, I'm very lucky that I have a very good, very nice uh, client in this project. Uh, this project is located in my hometown. I, I, I was born in, in Tangshan City. So, my client, he uh, completely supports me. He, he's even younger than me, but he really wanted to, uh, to make an ideal project 
he suggested, he even suggested the, the, the key concept, the third space, which is uh, in between the normal residential and the and the office, the normal office. He supported me to uh, to develop the design, which uh, introduced a kind of villas in high-rise buildings in the downtown area of the city. And of course, not the boring standard uh, floor design. So it, it is, uh, of course, it is a complicated uh, project in the eight degree earthquake uh, 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 fortification level area in this city. But we work together very well. Thank you. So I think the tip for everyone there is find nice clients, if you can, and then you can get your design across. <laughs> um, well, I know that you've studied the architect Louis uh, Baraga. Are there one or two other architects that uh, have had some influence in your career over the years? Um... Yes, if you mention that, I I sh um I I should um uh, um, uh think about uh Herzog uh, the the uh, the master architect, Swiss architect. Um, I worked uh, together with them uh for this uh first nice project in uh, two thousand three to two thousand eight. So they, uh, they and their uh, the the uh, the method, work working method of the office uh, influenced me uh, a lot. So my I I set up my uh, uh, Adelia uh, from in two thousand three. It's just at the beginning beginning um, uh, year of the of the Bertnice project. So. And and another uh, architect, I think is um, uh, Alvaro, Alvaro Caesar, the, the Portugal architect. Um, I I think his architecture uh, includes um, uh, somehow a poetic atmosphere and uh, and some free, free um, space. Yeah, it's an it's a, a abstract, but, um, but uh, 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 very uh, free and, and simple. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, uh, it, uh, it, uh, his architecture, I think, it influenced uh, he allowed, and of course the um, the Louis Barragan. We 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 do some research work for for for, for his work, and uh, uh, I think he's he make gardens through an architectural way. This is very um, very um, strong. It's uh, he he make gardens in the in the uh, in the later. Uh, uh, period of his career, just uh, by using arch architectural method to make gardens, not make gardens by nature, by 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 real natural uh, things. So it's a uh, it's a very very good influence for for me. Of course, I. I uh, I was influenced by um, by some by the architecture uh, which has no architect, it's unnamed architect, like the Forbidden City, like the the, the Chinese gardens, like the uh, Four Guangs Temple, the traditional Chinese architecture, classical, very very. Um, uh, high level uh, Chinese architecture. They don't have uh, architects to record it. Yeah. yeah. No, that's great. And, you know, I think it's come a full circle for you 
in terms of you talk about bird's nest in 2003 with Herzog and Jumeron, um, and you are currently in the midst of some very high profile projects yourself doing the Beijing 22 Olympics and Paralympics Winter Games. Um, and China is uh, changing very rapidly. Thinking ahead, what are your goals and expectation in the next 10 years? And how do you see architecture changing in China? Um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, very lucky to involve in two Olympics in, the, in Beijing. So for the 2008 Olympic, the Summer Olympic in Beijing, um, we can say it's a uh, it China uh, want to show the world uh, very uh, strong, very um, um, uh, great uh, impression and the international uh, uh, impressions mm -hmm. to the world. So you can see the the Bernice and the other Olympic projects are, have this character characters uh, but uh, for the for the uh, 2022 winter olympic games the, um, the 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 concept all the uh, the purchasing is sent from the 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 powerful the great architecture to a sustainable sustainable uh, concept. So we uh, in the in the Yanqing, for example, in the Yanqing zone, uh, which is I'm working mainly for, for the Winter Olympic uh, project. Uh, we um, uh, suggested the main design concept is the mountain uh, wooden venues and uh, sustainable Winter Olympic. So we emphasize the uh, how the uh, the how the artificial building, how the venues, how the big uh, activities can can uh, cooperate, can react uh, kindly with the environment, with the mountains, with the valleys. They are not powerful. They are they are even hidden in the mountains. So this is a um, change. For the Olympic, for the Olympic, two Olympics in Beijing, uh, but it also uh, show the change about China, about the Chinese, uh, of, about the development uh, tension in in China. So, I think uh, uh, in my work, um, I gradually. Um, uh, Just um, using my uh, design strategy, like the, uh, what I what I uh, presented today, uh, in the integrated geometry and poetic scenery, which is the architecture re uh, architecture react with nature. This concept to to, to be used in this huge uh, national projects. To, to show the influence uh, and show the change for the uh, new architecture. So I will try to uh, and, and, and continue to, to do, uh, to make the architecture in this way in the future. Thank you. Well, thank you. I think the future of China architects are very much uh, architecture. I mean, uh, very much in safe hands uh, with architects like yourself. Uh, producing some most amazing work across the country. Um, well, we're nearly coming to the end now, and I have to say it's been truly a pleasure uh, to be chairing today's session. I've learned a lot, uh, and I'm already with an architect. Uh, we've had some really positive comments from our audiences. Really, you've really inspired them, and they're really uh, very pleased that you've shared your journey and your schemes as well today. 
um, and it is truly appreciated. I want to thank you, particularly Jenga, for, for being part of our IBA for the community and for making time for us, our audience. Uh, today, I know it's Saturday, um, and it's very much uh, looking forward to working with you and to having you on board. I'm also very much looking forward to uh, seeing your book that's uh, due to come out. It looks truly fascinating. The sketches are fantastic. Um, and we, for those who are not aware, uh, Jingang is due to have an exhibition at RIBA Gallery, fingers crossed, post-pandemic, uh, that we will be there in July 2021. That is going to be fantastic. And of course, we will let everybody know. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoy the session as much as I have. Our next Hello Digi uh, China Digital Talk session is on the 12th of September by Li Zhang Ning, Deputy Dean of Tongji University. For now, a huge thank you again to Zhenga and to today's audience for watching. Xie Xie, I wish you all a very good weekend wherever you are in the world. Until next time, take care and stay safe. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Bye-bye.